Welcome, Troy. Good to have you on. Benny, my man. Thanks for having me. It's good to see you again. Always a pleasure, man. I'm seeing you all over socials, everywhere. Every time I log on to social, you're just delivering this unbelievable content. What's, what's going down? Yeah, well, I've been on a bit of a mission, mate. I'll probably say the last six to eight months and really trying to build a PPR, a personal media profile. And it's something that I've made it my mission as part of my business process to, you know, blast the social media platforms with my face and brand. And given that it's now part of my business process every week, hence why you're probably seeing me a lot, mate. <laughs> it's great. And I think well, outside of building your brand, I mean, I guess people are hearing, you know, how you think and feel and act and your, your inside intelligence around, I guess, what you know best on the streets where you live, because a lot of people, from what I understand, who are buying in the areas that you service, whether it's Cairns or it's, it's, um, it's Rockhampton, a lot of people buying there aren't living there, from what I understand, as buyer's agents. And so I'm sure a lot of the information you also share is re really valuable to people. Yeah. And that's something what I learned from you, even Ben, at the very start of my journey, when I enrolled at BAI, I was getting really clear on who my avatar was. And it is those exact type of people that are usually geographically challenged and unfamiliar with the markets that we're based. And I sort of made it my job and duty and mission in house to add value to these guys and really structured my content in a way to add value to and provide insight and perspective to a lot of these people that want to understand a little bit more about the markets that we're familiar with. And it's just a great segue then into us potentially becoming exposed as a business and as a brand to potential buyers in the area as well. So they sort of marry together nicely, provide them with value at the same time, making them aware of who we are and what we do could also be a, a great way to potentially get some organic leads. Makes sense. Question, you might not know the answer to this like specifically, but how many people do you think, let's use Rockhampton as an example, how many like people who are buying, let's say an investment property over in Rockhampton are not using a buyer's agent, if you were to guess? I'd say there'd be a large fraction of the local market that isn't using a buyer's agent at all, nor has ever heard of one. I'd say close to 95% of locally based buyers. What we find that there are still a lot of transactions that are from those that are geographically challenged, whether they're intra-region, interstate, international, that understand a little bit more that about real estate and the options of using a buyer's agent. So they become a bit more educated and aware that the service offering exists, but there's still a large fraction of the local market here that wouldn't know what a buyer's agent is. They probably think that it's an in-house representative for one of the sales offices here locally. But in saying that there are still a lot of transactions for people that are outside the region that are familiar with the concept, but sometimes are DIYing it themselves or engaging us for our services as well. Have you been able to crack into the local market? I've attempted to crack into the local market a few times, but to be honest, Ben, I've, what I've learned over the last couple of years in business is to really focus on my 80-20. And I found that 80% of my clients were in fact those that were geographically challenged and predominantly investors and home buyers that sit outside of the region. So I've actually done a lot on the front end and back end to ensure that we're focusing on those particular clients as a bit of a niche offering at the moment within this stage of our business journey. And by and large, as a result of us previously working with this type of client, this type of avatar, and had a lot of good wins. And to be honest, Ben, they're far more easy to close than someone that's local and they tend to be a lot of tie kicking and churn and burn through a lot of those leads as opposed to those that I've figured out that are geographically challenged have a tendency to be a bit more easier to close and it's really allowed us to tailor our sales offering in a way to, you know, and develop a service offering that appeals to that type of market. And that's by and large how going forward now what I probably want to do is more or less position the like buyer's agent brand to target this specific market niche in, in those that are geographically challenged as opposed to trying to appease everyone in the marketplace. Makes sense. I've never personally bought, bought for example, in Rockhampton. I've actually never traveled there. What is 
I guess from your perspective, the main drivers, reasons as to why all these investors are flocking there now and have been for a while. Well, it's one of those, I hear it all the time and it's not only locally here by a lot of the people that are in business, particularly uh, long-term residents, developers, prominent business women, women, they all refer to Rockhampton as being an old tractor. It's an old tractor type market where it just never stops. It, yeah, there are small periods of lulls and and small periods of retraction, but it's always a market that is moving in the right direction. And investors get a lot of confidence when they park their money here because it's not a market that has a lot of historical volatility. And you could easily see that in neighboring markets such as Gladstone and Mackay, where there's been a lot of fluctuations in prices over the years, as opposed to Rockhampton being something that's been more of a safe bet for investors. And in addition to that, as a region as well, Rockhampton is the centerpiece that acts as a regional hub to a lot of the neighboring smaller regional towns on its periphery in central Queensland. Out in the west, you've got Mauer, Emerald, uh, towards the coastline, you've got Imnu Park and Yapoon. And further inland, you've also got Mount Morgan and Biloela. Like these are all places that are dependent on Rockhampton itself for its you know, key public amenity. And that is why a lot of investors have a tendency to flock here because they see a lot of those upsides when it comes to investing in Rockhampton as a regional hub. Got it. I like that. Okay. And for you specifically, are you buying predominantly in Rockhampton or where are you focusing uh, with your investor clients? So I've how I've structured the business is to be a geographic I'd be a geographical specialist. So I've designed my brands in a way where we've been very specific in a particular marketplace where we're, where we're experts in. And in Rockhampton, I've got my Capricorn Life brand and our specific focus there is central Queensland. So I'm not necessarily buying in Rockhampton in general for my investor clients. We're usually onboarding an investor, understanding their desires, their investment goals, risk profile, budget, and then trying to target the best asset within central Queensland. And then vice versa for my clients that are interested in investing in North Queensland. And now we've just recently expanded into Southeast Queensland and we intend on doing the same here. So it all depends on the individual client. Ben, coming back to your question on if I'm buying predominantly in Rockhampton, no. I'm more or less looking at central Queensland as a region for those investors that are interested in buying in central Queensland and trying to find where the best value for money sits, whether it's in Rockhampton, whether it's in Bundaberg, whether it's on the coastline and beautiful Yipoon, down on the coastline and Gladstone and Tannum Sands or further inland to Emerald per se, it all comes back to the individual investor. But in saying that, out of the three major regional hubs in central Queensland, if I were to put them on a list in terms of preference from one to three, Rockhampton certainly sits at the top, followed by Bundaberg, then followed by Mackay. Yeah, nice. And I mean, you've mentioned the word geographically challenged a few times. I guess for someone who is, let's say, interstate and is looking to get, let's say, even into whether it's central Queensland or southeast Queensland or north Queensland, I mean, it'd be a bit overwhelming, right? Like you'd be sitting there thinking as a buyer, like, where do you go and why do you go and then how do you go? And so I think, um, I guess for a prospective buyer looking to engage your services or a buyer's agent service, you think it would just be a no-brainer. Well, that's what we've learned, Ben, is that after dealing with this type of client avatar over the years, they've been the ones we believe we could provide the most value to as a whole. And then the ones that have been the easiest to articulate our value proposition to in, in addition to that. But the ones that also have the most pain points and all of those pain points uh, some of the things you just mentioned, people that don't understand where are the good suburbs to buy in, people that under don't understand what's good value for money in the area, don't understand the different market trends. So they're reliant on someone that's a local specialist that has that level of knowledge and perspective to help them transact in this marketplace. Like just yesterday, for example, I had a guy give me a call from Hong Kong. He's real he wants to relocate to Gladstone in central Queensland. And again, he had a really big sum of money, cash ready to go. But again, when it came to understanding Gladstone, he didn't know where to even start. 
And that is what a lot of buyers are experiencing. And that's where we have found we provide the most value and we're just basically acting as the bridge between, you know, buying you a Pacific property and buying the life in the area that you propose to set up shop one day or invest. I love it. And that's a great example. When did you, I guess, just rewinding the clock back, when did you get your first taste for investing in property? First taste was, was living up in North Queensland and seeing a lot of the market trends there over the years and a lot of investors getting it wrong. And I sort of got the taste then to sort of go, oh, there's a lot of people here buying in areas where I wouldn't necessarily buy or I believe isn't good value for money. So I've got a taste then to help investors in that sense straight away. That's where the appeal for this particular uh, career was sparked. But me as an individual investor, the interest came largely off the back of my ambitions to one day be a property developer. And it was by and large trying to find assets that I can hold as part of my portfolio that have future development potential that I could use to eventually, you know, get into and leverage one day for development purposes. So that's where my interest was initially sparked in the property investment space. And I've made it my mission in terms of the type of assets that I select to all potentially have some form of upside potential that is related to property development because that's where I eventually want to take my interests uh, going forward. Nice. And so with any of your clients, do you use that as a cornerstone strategy where you're looking at an asset where there is development potential? Oh, absolutely. In-house, I use about 10 key investment principles just as a high-level guide when we're selecting uh, what we believe are assets that are going to outperform in the marketplace and assets that have that sit under intrinsic value that have renovation and development potential is one of the key principles. And yeah, it is certainly an asset that we are targeting uh, for clients that are investors. And in regional markets, there is a lot of upside with these type of dwellings. You have a lower entry point. You have a lot of opportunity here to create value in marketplaces where there is, let's say, apartments, units, or townhouses that are in short supply. So People that have this as a strategy when it comes to property investing and buying assets that have development potential, regional Queensland can sometimes, in terms of the lucrativeness of a particular deal, can be far better than doing a three or four million dollar project in a capital city. Just on a margins percentage, some of these deals in regional Queensland when it comes to development can be very lucrative. And I've rubbed shoulders with a number of developers over my years in regional Queensland, and we've seen you know, established and new developers make on deals, you know, more than 25% margins on developments and residential estates, even where they've made more than $100,000 per allotment. So there's a lot of upside in, in targeting these type of opportunities in regional Queensland as well. And it's something that I've made it my mission to educate a lot of our buyers is that we certainly want to target these type of assets because of that upside potential. Makes a lot of sense. So those margins do look juicy. Um, are you buying Metro or only regional? So at this stage, I've set up three different brands under the Life Group. So Life Buyers Agency is my head group and then Sid Sunbert are three subsidiary brands. I've got Capricorn Life, which is a central Queensland specific focus brand. And we're only buying as an area specialist in that market. Up in North Queensland, I've got Tropical Life that's specific to North Queensland, Cairns, Townsville, and Port Douglas and the surrounding area. And then I've got Sunshine Life now where I've recently opened a satellite office in Noosa and I'm shortly going to expand into Brisbane and the Gold Coast where we're going to be focusing on those metro locations. And the, the idea is, is that we're going to be a geo-specialist on the ground in these different locations, focusing on a niche market in terms of the type of avatar I want to work with. And then the idea would be at a later date, we're going to cross-pollinate across those different locations. So I'll be working with investors from Cairns and we might buy for them a property in Brisbane, for example, I have a team on the ground there. A team in Brisbane, work with a client there that might want to buy a property in central Queensland. We have that ability to cross-pollinate. So that's by and large how I've structured the business. And I've done it that way because I see for the type of client that we want to go after, it's it makes the most sense to me as a business model. 
and to build those brands that are geographically focused because I think it really appeals to the type of clients and market we want to target. And then that gives me the ability to scale then over the long term into different uh, states and territories. I like that, man. That's really cool. So I guess effectively you're going to have like the whole of Queensland covered. Like once you, um, I guess, get into that whole Noosa and then obviously move into Brisbane and it seems like you're going to have a lot of it covered. Well, that's going to be the plan is to have these individual bland, brands geographically focused in different parts of Queensland where essentially then we'd have the East Coast of Queensland covered and the West. That's awesome. That's great. And so obviously you being on the ground, have, have you noticed that you've got more pull with some of these real estate agents? Because obviously there's so many buyers agents from what I understand who, are, who aren't on the ground, don't have boots on the ground in specific parts of Queensland. Have you noticed with you being on the ground and being able to eyeball the agents and go through their properties physically and I guess shake hands with them, et cetera. Like, have you found that um, you are winning deals based on you having boots on the ground? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, Ben. And to be honest, we can, I think the relationship's more authentic and genuine and we can both be more frank with each other usually when you're on the ground and you're shirt fronting agents around different opportunities. What we what we have seen is a trend of a lot of buyers agents in the markets where based transacting that aren't necessarily uh, locally based, that tend to be more metro based than buying into these areas that we're focused And We find that there is a bit of a shortfall there with a lot of them in terms of understanding some of these markets, but at the same time, uh, not having those genuine relationships with agents where you can have those rather robust and frank conversations. I've seen it a number of times now where we've went through a property, for example, in let's say Rockhampton, I didn't mind it. It ticked a number of different boxes. However, it wasn't the right fit for us because we like to say that we're very fussy on the ground and like to get down to the street and pocket level. And then all of a sudden we hear that there's been a, another buyer's agent from somewhere else that have snapped it up, which is okay. That's completely really fine. But we have that ability to just be a little bit more different by having that perspective on the ground. But then those relationships where we can have those frank conversations with agents and have that level of perspective where we can say, no, that's a no deal for us because we're local. But coming back to what you said around those relationships with agents, yeah, so much better, dude, being on the ground it's and being a part of their network is, yeah, I think by and large, a lot of that, that off-market opportunity pre-market is also there, you know, in I put per se more abundance than someone that might necessarily be out of town as well. Yeah, nice. I love that. And most of your clients, are they like first-time investors? Are they looking to go for number two to number three? Or are they, are they quite spread in, in regards to their investment journey? We get a cross-section of different clients, we find. But I'd say most of them fall within the faculty of being first or second-time investors. And they're quite savvy in their own sense that They've done a lot of the heavy lifting themselves in terms of desktop research to pick the area that we're geographically based in. Well, let's say an investor from Sydney has done their research that Bundaberg is on the rise. And then they just don't want to take that additional step of buying a property in Bundaberg. They want someone to hold their hand on the ground and provide that level of perspective and guidance. So we find that we tend to work with those type of investors that are quite savvy in their own right, but not sophisticated investors, but a first or second time mom and dad investors that are looking to kickstart their portfolio, add another one into a small portfolio. And they're looking for someone on the ground to help them mitigate risk, essentially not buy in the wrong areas, buy in the right suburb, avoid flood areas, avoid all of the key things that you want to avoid when you're buying an investment. But at the same time, finding ways to you know, give you upside when it comes to the investment and buying in the right areas to give you a lot of that great upside. So that tends to be the type of clients that we're working with. And most of them on average, yeah, having one or two properties in their portfolio. Love it. And we're going to wrap up. I, I love how you've wrapped your, umbre your the umbrella company is life buyers agency. And you've got the three subsidiaries under that. I think it's, um, I think it's really cool what you've done and what you are doing 
And it's just great to see, I guess, how your business is expanding and your thought process. And I guess for anyone that is going to be listening, where can they uh, find you on socials to soak up your content? Yes, I, I, pu- I publish a lot of content on LinkedIn. So if you are part of that professional network on LinkedIn, part of that platform, search me up, Troy Sambasani on there. I am very active now on TikTok and Instagram, uh, and that's part of my personal media strategy. So you can find me on uh, TikTok and Instagram as well under Troy Sambasani Property. And then shortly I'll be launching a podcast called Road to Summit where I'll essentially be not talking about real estate, I'll be more or less talking about uh, mindset, wealth, abundance, entrepreneurship. So keep an eye out for that in due course as well. I'll be launching that in the next few weeks. And I'm hoping to have you on, Ben, too. That's awesome, man. I'd love to be on your podcast. And yeah, I highly recommend that anyone who is um, looking to see someone drive serious content, they should look at you. Because as I said to you before, we even kicked off this session. I was like, man, I really admire and respect how how determined you are with your socials because, you know, it's, it's typically an inconsistent journey for most people. It's hard to stay diligent with it. And not only yeah. are you really disciplined with it, but you, you deliver good content. So well done. Yeah, dude. And I've had a lot of learnings. Like I've figured it out over time, what works, how to structure my hooks, how to do better lighting, what type of videos appeal. And then I've noticed my videos go from a hundred views to a hundred thousand views and it's just trial and error. And if you don't start, you're never going to really know. And once you sort of learn those ropes, yeah, it can be of great upside potential for your business in tapping into that social space, particularly for organic leads. Um, it's so good, man. Like if you can get into that and leverage that, you get a lot of good organic leads. And then once you run paid ads as well, and you've got a lot of really good content there to give you social proof and credibility and authority, then they become a lot easier to close as well, particularly in those leads that are coming through your paid advertising channels. So I recommend for those that are on the start of their journey, if you haven't got a lot of cash, just create content and then create a personal media profile. And once you've got that, run paid ads and then you've got all that social proof there to help close deals when they come through. Love it, Troy. Good to chat and can't wait for you to spread your rings all around Queensland, man. Catch you soon. Thanks, Benny. Thanks for having me on, mate. Appreciate it.